Please give it up for Jack the From 1981 to 2001, I was a submariner. I served on Trident ballistic nuclear submarines. And when we were on mission, or what we called strategic deterrent patrols, we were completely cut off from the world. And my wife and I, we had five boys. And during those patrols, for those whole 80 days, they never heard one word from me. So it was very important to me to really cultivate the relationship with each one of my boys. I was on the base and I saw an advertisement <coughs> for a backpacking trip to Lake Angeles, which is up on Hurricane Ridge. And I thought, this is perfect. I'll be able to take John and Blake, the two oldest boys, and we'll go backpacking together. We have camped in the Olympic National Park many times. We were experienced with backpacking, and this is going to be an excellent opportunity. The morning of the trip was beautiful. It was a gorgeous September morning. I couldn't have asked for anything better. We got to the trailhead, checked in with the ranger at Hurricane Ridge, and began our journey. Now, John and Blake were very excited to get to the campsite, so they wanted to go ahead. And I said, sure, just be careful. And they, they went on their way. And the rest of us guys, we just kind of carried on at our slower pace. Now, about halfway up the mountain, the trail's about three and a half miles, and about halfway up, I see this old man coming down the hill, very slowly, and he looked completely worn out and crestfallen. And I thought, wow, old guy. So he comes along, and then when he gets to me, I say to him, how was it? Never lifting his eyes. In fact, he didn't even stop walking. He just went, the rain, the rain. <laughs> So I made fun of him internally. I thought to myself, this guy's a wimp, right? Probably from California, does not know what it's like to be in the Olympic <laughs> National Park. He's probably ill prepared. I know what I'm doing. And I've done this before many times. But um, so we continue on our way and finally arrive at the campsite. It is absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful green, lush trees, moss, everywhere. Now, John and Blake had already gotten up to the campsite, and they set it up already, so they had the tent and everything all ready to go. And they were anxious to show me some of the things they discovered. They showed me the lake and how beautiful it was. They showed me the waterfalls that filled the lake from the mountain, uh, from the ice melt. And there's a, these stone spires, and they're like fingers, and as the clouds come by, they cut the clouds into little, and they look like little angels going across the lake, right? Lake Angeles, makes sense, beautiful. And I'm, I'm still thinking to myself, wow, this is just awesome. I could not have asked for anything better. Great time to spend with my uh, two oldest boys. And I was tired, and I said to myself, a nap is in order. So I found a rock that was just covered in moss, and it was about as thick as a Tempur-Pedic mattress. <laughs> and I laid down on it, and I fell asleep almost immediately. Now, I don't know how long it was before I opened my eyes, but I, when I opened my eyes, I saw these like Disney-like chipmunks taking snacks out of my backpack. <laughs> they're trained up there for that purpose. And, but, it was, but it wasn't a money, just little snacks, and they got them out of my backpack, and, and uh, we went ahead and had dinner. And it was a beautiful dinner, and uh, we sat around the campfire afterwards telling some stories, and I was recounting the old man, and again, just making fun of his ill preparation and, and just tell you know, if you're from Washington State, you just know that you need to be prepared for the rain in the mountains. Mm -hmm. So we go to sleep, and sure enough, pretty much as soon as we go to bed, it starts to drizzle, and we, we drift off to sleep to the pitter-patter of the rain. Around midnight, it sounded like a train had rolled through our campsite, and the wind was howling, and it had ripped the rain fly off our tent, and rain was being driven into the tent. And I look down and I see my boys look panicked and I'm probably not in the best shape. And I'm thinking to myself, this is not the trip that I planned. <laughs> I was expecting a father-son experience, not a near-death experience. <laughs> and I, I look down, there's streams running through the tent. That's not right. 
done. We're on Hurricane Ridge. And, and outside, just the wind was howling. You could hear this tree snapping branches. And, and I just was very concerned with my well-being. And um, again, I looked down at the boys, and I could see that they were a little upset. And I reassured them that everything was going to be fine. And also to reassure myself that everything was going to be fine. And in the morning, or the, eventually the rain stops, and in the morning we, we get up, and everything is so, we can't even build a small fire to warm ourselves back up. And I told the other guys, I said, I'm done. I'm going back down, to, back down to the vehicles. And they said, and then they're like, come on, you know, stick it out another night. I said, no, <laughs> I'm done. So we broke in, and uh, we started heading back down to the vehicles. And about halfway down, there's a young family coming up the hill. And they asked me how it was. And I just said, they're <laughs>